Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. It is early November 2020 and we've got some really important updates to share with you on the FA18C. Let's quickly go through the list. One, Inla launch acceptable region added. Secondly, and really excitingly, we've had added FTT mode for moving targets with the ground radar and we'll show an example of that. Third, new gun sound, cool. Fourth, we've had added precise and grid coordinate entry systems for the navigation system and we'll go through that very quickly. And fifth and sixth are linked together, added to the helmet mounted display system, we've got RWR symbology, which is new for me at least, and it's hooked up to the data link so we can see data link information on airborne targets. First, let's look at the INLA indication. So, slick missile, find a suitable target, lock onto him fly towards him. Now you will remember previously that when we were in our max or our lethal and the target was within the ASE circle we would have a shoot command here. Flashing for our lethal, solid for our max and if I speed forward I've simply been replaced by in law and in law flashing. Now let's go and see FTC. In a fresh aircraft now, let's go to air to ground mode. Let's let the air to ground radar populate. We can see we have a lovely return off our two o'clock, about 20 miles, I guess that is. No, 10 miles. I'm gonna assign my TDC to this screen with SCS right, sensor control switch right. I'm now gonna expand on him with an expand level two. I'm gonna press and hold TDC depress and use the TDC slew keys to move over to him. Let that render and populate. That's him. Now, out of interest, if I were to skip forward time to prove that he's moving, you can see he's moving there at 25 knots. Now we're going to use our FTT. We are going to, bearing in mind that we are on the right screen here, we're going to press and hold SCS right and move the TDC slew keys onto him. Then release SCS right. It's now locked onto him. You can see we have a brick here. He is at 26 knots and his magnetic heading is 067 degrees. To prove that we are fully locked onto him, again, why don't we speed up time and you can see him moving at his 26 knots, yeah? So that's a moving target lock that we've gotten him. Again, to prove, we can see that he's 30 degrees off to the right now. It's guiding us right and he's 10.5, 10.6 nautical miles. And if I speed it up, you can see it changes. He's now 29 degrees, 10.6 miles, and that will obviously change. So what we've got is a SPI locked onto him. This is great because we can employ a weapon on him and he can't escape our SPI. A SPI is going to follow him wherever he goes in the fan of our radar. So let's go and employ a weapon against him. Let's unpause real quick. Obviously, usually you would uh, do a harpoon, but just as a proof of concept, I'm going to show you that we can launch an auto-guided weapon against him. Master Arms on even though he's moving and it will be dynamically updated until I release the bomb. So essentially we can do this at night with uh, without night vision gear because the accuracy of the radar system we get a perfect bomb drop. The bomb probably will miss because by the time I've dropped it he would have moved out of the way but as a proof of concept I think this is pretty good. Just want to keep slightly ahead of that CTRP of that uh, azimuth line. Moving more and more. Okay, bomb away. Ho ho ho! Got him! That shows the power of our new FDT mode. Let's have a look at the gun. Let's go around again. Like the A10C and actually some other aircraft with this update, we've got a lovely new gun sound. This is the M61. Pretty cool, huh? Technically, the funny thing is, technically, with no white vision gear, I could now, with my FTC mode, fire against him in the night when he was in blackout. That's how big that uh, that thing is. I'm trying to show you. Okay, let's have a look at the helmet-mounted display. Let's turn our helmet-mounted display on. Left screen, I'm going to go to situational awareness screen. Let's have a look at what we've got in our mission. And if I link on the screen now the key to the Hornet Link 16 HAFU system, we can tell that. B is a flight member B and he is a donor friendly. This guy is a non-flight donor friendly. This guy is a non-flight donor friendly. This guy is a one factor authenticated ambiguous HAFU. We know that by offboard sensors he's been identified as hostile because the lower chevron. 
We know that via onboard sensors, he's not been identified or is an unknown coalition. We know by the square and because he's in yellow in color, whereas this guy is green, this guy's green, and this guy's green. Next, let's check them out on our helmet. So, first thing to note is that we get, if I pause there, the RWR signals from our SA page, our EW page, our radar page, and our HUD dynamically shown on our HMD. So if I'm to slew around, we can see which direction the radar signal is coming from. This is particularly useful if we're told, for instance, there's an F-18 merge with me, but they don't know the direction, then I can simply pan around like that, look in the direction of the 18 signal, and then zoom in and try and find him. That's what I found it very useful for, as well as general situational awareness. Now let's have a look at the contacts. So this guy here is that guy there, donor friendly. We can tell that he's friendly because he is circle shaped. We can also tell he is flight ED, the first letter and the last letter of the flight name, Enfield in this case, and 21 at a range of 14.5 miles. This guy over here is Cult Flight 11 at a range of 14.5 miles, friendly. This guy here is currently unknown. Unknown flight, range 15 miles unknown coalition from our onboard sensor. Now, what if we were to find him on our radar, and if I sign TDC, it's assigned, and try and find him there, and if I press SCS depress for a manual IFF mode four, we've now two-factor authenticated him as a hostile, Chevron, Chevron, onboard and offboard, and looked at him, and now we can see in the HMD, he is a Chevron, so he's a bad guy. Note, we only have green color in the HMD, so everything looks green, so you're gonna have to go via shape only. Now, the only th other thing I'd like to show is flight members look a little different. Stand by as I try and look for RC. That, there he is. Now, because he's turning and maneuvering, it's not gonna be beautifully accurate. Remember, this is data link driven. But we can see there, he is donor friendly and he is flight member B. I'm going to be A, three and four will be C and D at 1.5 miles. Only other thing I'd like to point out is that we have a maximum seven contacts to be shown in this method in the HMD. Why it's limited to seven, I don't know. I guess it's just a technology at the time. How it decides which of the contacts it's going to show. Is it via range or some kind of threat priority? I don't know. I guess we'll find out in due course. Finally, I'd like to show the changes to navigation. So we can pause here. We can use this, I guess. Uh, we're going to go to our HSI here. We're going to go to our data here. We've currently got, we've got eight waypoints. Let's say I want to add a new one, number nine. We could always add it via lat long in different formats, but now we can add it in MGRS grid. So let's add it in MGRS grid. UFC grid, it's going to change things around. We can now see grids. We pause and go to F10. I want to choose a point. How about these bad guys here? I want to put this waypoint in. So if I zoom out to the large squares, I want this square. Bravo November. It just so happens that Bravo November is in the middle, but if it wasn't uh, and we had to shift the map over, we could do that. Check our TDC is assigned to this screen. Then TDC slew key is to slew, and we can move, for instance, northeast and press TDC depress. And if I wanted to go back, then I can go back, but I'm going to choose BN. Bravo November. Done. Next, I want to type in here the digits, which is going to be these six digits, or if I wanted to go to precise mode, I could be 10 digits and in this case I want absolute accuracy let's go 10 digits and I'm gonna go and choose uh, that point there now look at the top left I've got it in MGRS uh, I can actually change that, I think left alt and Yankee you can see I'm gonna change the modes so I'm gonna quickly grab that number not the 40 RBN just the number into a scratch pad notepad and then let's go and copy it into the machine four six two seven four one seven three nine seven enter and if it's worked and it has we've now got 40 romeo bravo november and the 10 digit precise that we've got so that's got my waypoint nine now correctly put on that guy there we can go and put the elevation in if we want that's all i've got to show today i hope you agree we've got some crazy good changes uh, i'll see you later